That's what Jesus did. When Jesus came and walked on earth, a leopard comes, touches him. What's the law said? You're unclean. Go outside, camp for seven days, cleanse yourself according to the law. Then you come back and say, why? Because because leprosy contaminates you. You touch a dead body, death contaminates you. So you're unclean. And so all kinds of other stuff. Jesus comes, touches, touches the touches the leopard, and what happens? His holiness cleanses the leopard. He doesn't get a leopard. He, he, he gets a very leprosy. Because Jesus gives a whole new way of doing things. Heaven now comes on earth and starts to, you know, and and possess and take over. Before, hell takes over, you know. Filth comes on and corrupts us. Now, His holiness cleanses. And that's the glory of the, of the new. And that's what Jesus came to do. So, so He, you know, so He, so, so God can't wait to put the Spirit in you, but He can Jesus, Jesus even says, if anybody thirsty, tired of religion, come and drink from me. <laughs> but, but, uh, and then out of your belly, the drink turns into a river. Out of your belly, start flowing from that drink, you know. He said that to a Samaritan woman, which then, not exactly the most holy person around to talk to, but he's given her incredible revelation even though she had a really bad reputation. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't mind that because he knows it will change all. And so he says, hey, let me tell you what. This water is drinking cool. Jacob, but, but let me tell you something. What I give you turns into a spring, artesian spring. And gu gushing fountains of endless life. So he'll give you endless life, endless love, endless uh, uh, power, everything. Because that's him. He'll, he'll come in you and do all that for you, right? And and and, and Jesus says the same thing. And, and John says, Out of your belly shall flow a river of living water. Thus he spake about what? The Holy Spirit. However, he said, Not yet. Not yet. Mm. Why? I haven't gone to the cross. I haven't paid the price. I haven't been lifted. I haven't been glorified. The, the day I do that, then the Holy Ghost can come in you. Mm. And. And you will not contaminate it. It will cleanse you. Holy Ghost will impart to you everything I did. And he'll, he'll implement it. And you're going to be a carer of me. After the Holy Ghost, I, the living God, will be in you. Just as much as the Father is in me now, I'll be in you. That is what Christianity is based on. You cannot get God in you any other way. I don't care what religious thing you do. Christ had to do what he did. And the Holy Spirit got revealed to you. And then you got it. When you believe it. When you believe what Jesus did, the Holy Spirit activating it, and often he uses people like I'm talking now, but hey, you have the Holy Ghost. You don't have to listen to me. I just inspire you. Go, go study these scriptures and say, Holy Ghost, show that to me. Then, then stop listening to rickety teachings and nonsense and philosophies and humanistic <laughs> stuff that tells you, well, you have that sinful nature to deal with. You got to suppress it. Yeah, right, as though you could. Hmm? If you could suppress your sinful nature yeah. and take care of it, why would Jesus have to die? It's not good news. Mm. Oh, yeah. You gotta, you know, starve that bad dog. What? Two dogs? You said two dogs? Bad dog is a good dog. What? Am I a doghouse? <laughs> what a dog, what a dog, dog theology. I'm not a doghouse, I'm a temple. I'm a law, I don't know dogs in you know, don't, don't get this dog theology <laughs> mess with you, you know. Mm. You have a new nature, and we all agree we have new nature, but what we got to agree, and I can't wait, but if Christ globally, worldwide to agree, we do not have the sinful, fallen, rotten, ugly, stupid, demonic nature. <laughs> there it is. I'll give you new nature, but I'll take the old one away. I'll take it. That's a prophecy. And you get to be fulfilled. You get the fulfillment of that prophecy. You get to carry the fulfillment of that prophecy. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus came to do. Now, if he did that, if he did that, if he paid such high price, why can't we just believe it? Says, Lord, you help me get it. Help me believe it. Help me. Live it. Help me have it. Help me manifest it. Manifest it in me. I mean, this is true. Then 
let true be true and let everything be a lie. Everything else be a lie then. If this is true, let all men be a lie. Who doesn't agree with it? Yeah. You know? So, I'm talking to you like this, not because I want you to talk like that necessarily. Take your time. Let it seize it. Let it work. Let it manifest. Let it be enjoyed. Live with that long enough to know that's more real than everything else. And then when you open your mouth, you have something to to stand on and, and based on, you know. And I, I encourage you to talk to each other because you're the class. You've all heard it. You've talked to each other. And, and you'll understand. So when when some of you start drifting back into this other stuff that says, oh yeah, devil's still in you, if your nature's still in you. But, and then you have a chance to hey, remember that. Let's go to the scripture together. Let's pray. You know, you can encourage each other. You know, because definitely the temptation not to believe the truth will, will show up. Just remember, he can't touch you. Not that he can't touch you, but he can't touch him who is in you. That's the biggest deal. Christ in you is not touchable by Satan, guaranteed. I mean, he can touch, but he'll be electrocuted. So he's done that one too many times. He doesn't want to get electrocuted. Okay. So he's backing off. Don't think the devil is an offense. The devil is not an offense. He's trying to scare you, but he's not an offense. He starts to get you going and running around. You know, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Mm -hmm. Well, the picture is a gate. Well, has you ever seen gates gate moving towards you? No, gate sits there and you're moving forward. The gate is not attacking you. Yeah. Gates are not storming. <laughs> There's no gates walking. <laughs> he sits there and tries to hold out, but you, it cannot prevail. You're, you're breaking it down. You're an offense. It's not an offense. The devil doesn't want to mess with you. Again, not with you. He'd like to mess with you, but he doesn't want to mess with Christ in you. Holy Ghost is not comfortable commodity for Satan. It's pain. Pain in the neck. He doesn't want pain in the neck. He doesn't want to deal with the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's one more passage that is very controversial in a sense that it's hard to understand and people often misunderstand it. And that passage is about, yeah, but doesn't the flesh and the spirit wrestle? No. You know, what you think is that a wrestling match? Is that how you visualize that? Because that's how it's presented. Oh, there's a struggle within between the sinful nature, between the flesh and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it's not the equal. All right. Yeah. <gasps> Holy Ghost. <gasps> no, no, please. Don't, don't belittle the Holy Ghost. Mm. He's, he's not opponent. There's no equal to him. Mm. No one can get in the ring with the Holy Ghost to survive. Mm. Holy Ghost just blinks and the well. opponent is gone. There's no way for the Holy Spirit to be, to be equal to anything. He's unequal. Read the attributes of God. He's totally unequal. What, what makes it big is these grasshopper viewpoints. Oh, the flesh is big. Listen, the whole, the whole, uh, that I'm talking about Galatians 5:17, where the famous struggle between the flesh and the spirit. You know. 5.17 for the desires of the flesh as opposed to the Holy Spirit and desire of the Spirit opposed to the flesh the God is human nature for these are antagonistic to each other continue with standing in a conflict with each other so that you are not free but uh, prevented from doing what desire you want what desire you do what you desire to do what you desire to do so what the heck are you desiring to do anyways do you want to go contrary to the Holy Ghost? Do you want to go contrary to who you are? Is that what you desire? I mean, what is it? Is it talking about? Ask Winnie tomorrow about this, because she's she's got the goods on that. I I did not know how to deal with that scripture in all honesty, and I avoided it. <laughs> it's like a little too cautious for me, and it didn't go along with everything else I read. And it's just like I must not understand it, so I was passing it on. Good thing Winnie stepped in. It. 
in the, in the ring. So she's tackling that scripture. Oh, yeah. Okay, God. So she.